All right. Uh, let's get this thing popping. Let's get it popping. All right. Let's get it pop, pop, popping. Let me get my window in order over here while I'm getting it popping. How y'all doing, man? Let's get it popping. Let me throw this. Oops. Let me, all right. let me turn let's that volume pop, down. Pop, pop it. Let me turn that volume down. Let me get all my bangs together. Let me get all my pages together. Uh, how y'all doing, man? Hope y'all having a good day. Uh, pretty much, I'm a little bit on time. A little bit on time, you know. A little bit on time, but I'm here. Let me get all my pages in order. Got that on the side. Let me let everybody know real quickly on the gram that we're live while y'all coming on in the room. Everybody come on in. While y'all doing that, let me let the gram know that, hey, this shit is about to go down. We popping it off. We're going to have a nice, good discussion. Not too long. Not too, too long. But, you know, we're going to do how we do. My mom got me this shirt, by the way. Shout out to my mom. Shout out to Mama Flex. <laughs> my mom got me this shirt with the onk and a crown on it. She thinks highly of me. All right? My mom thinks highly of me, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about parents today on today's broadcast. Y'all bear with me. Let me put this up. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, bam, bam. There it is. All right, we're here. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. Shout out to everybody. They already hit the cash app. Hit that cash app for the Melanoid Ministries. That's King Flex 818 dollar sign. What's up in Chicago? Shout out to Chicago. Oh, Y'all come on in the room. Let's get this room popping. People are coming on in. We're almost at 2,000. Let's get to around 7,000, 8,000 tonight. We're going to get in here heavy. Um, everybody, I need you to hit that thumbs up button. Hit that thumbs up button, please. Hit the thumbs up button. Let, let the people know it's real. Hit that thumbs up button. Oh, man, we're here. Family, we gotta, we're gonna have a, a good conversation tonight, man. The shit is real out here. Family, things are getting real. Look, people in here talking about some Candace Owens. Look, guys, Candace Owens, man, black people, stop letting Candace Owens waste your time with serious discourse. Candace Owens is to be ridiculed. You don't have a serious discussion with or about Candace Owens. Black people keep falling for that shadow boxing that Neely Fuller tells us about. Candace Owens is a nothing burger. Her job is to troll you to waste your time trying to have serious discourse with her. She's to be ridiculed. All right? Candace Owens has the same three troll talking points that she just does over and over again, and Negroes fall for it. The three talking points she always do, everything black people have done to them bad is black people's fault. Um, there is no white supremacy. White supremacy doesn't exist. And what about black on black crime? Yeah? You know, that's it. That's her... What about black on black crime? White supremacy don't exist. White people are the greatest. And everything that happens to you is justified and you deserve it. Okay? So the same three bullshit talking points. She's just doing what her paymasters tell her to do. She's to be ridiculed. She is to be ridiculed. I put this picture up earlier today about Candace Owens. And I told people to name this R&B group. Look at these two. You know, coons of a feather flock together. That's a great R&B name. <laughs> coons of a feather. But yeah, this is a you know, this is a coon to be ridiculed. You don't have a, a serious conversation about Candace Owens. It's BB and CC. The BB stands for butter biscuits and the CC stands for crazy coon. BB and CC, butter biscuit and crazy coon. <laughs> Winans. Uh, you you ridicule. It's, I'm not having a serious discourse about BB and CC, Butter Biscuit and, and Crazy Coon. <laughs> no, their job is to waste your time and to offer white supremacists a shield for their racism. They'll have these coons spew their racism for them. Eh? 
yeah, Larry. I found an interesting picture on Larry Elder. <laughs> Hold on. I found a speaking of Larry Elder. Hold on. Hold on. Because Coons. Hold on. It's interesting. Coons interests me to the point where I always want to know what. When did they turn Coon in their lives? I mean, what you know, what happened before they were Coons? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Larry Elder as a teenager. I found that's Larry Elder as a fucking teenager. He had butter biscuits hidden in his afro, and on um. The FBA site. I think we're gonna have a we're gonna have like a baby coon, like a name that coon. We're gonna show baby pictures of coons, and see if people can guess them. See, you would never guess this was this nigga. Even the the afro had a coon swirl to it. That's not a regular afro. He had to put a bang in his afro. That's Larry Elder for real. <laughs> that is Larry Elder. Yeah, so that nigga Afro didn't even have no soul. <laughs> My God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hold on. So that's what I want to do on, on the FBA site. We're going to have uh, the Baby Coon series. You know. Can you guess the coon? <laughs> Show some of their little baby pictures. <laughs> Oh, God. But anyway, anyway, look, hit the thumbs up button. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the thumbs up button. Let's get seven, 8,000 people in here. We had 4,000 already. <clears throat> but look, things are getting very serious out here. Okay? Family, within the last, um, within the last couple of weeks, family, there have been three black men across the country that have been lynched by hanging, allegedly, I'll say allegedly, just for legal reasons. There's been three within the last couple of weeks. A lot of folks don't know about the situation out there, excuse me, in New York. Now I'm going to talk about the brother who got lynched last night in Atlanta who got shot. We'll, we'll, the brother got shot in the back by the race soldiers. So, you know, the anti- Black war still going on, but we got to watch out because these people, the anti-black war is so heavy right now. These people are doing these ritualistic lynchings, allegedly. This is what it's looking like. They're doing ritualistic lynchings, okay? And this was a case up in New York earlier this week, well, last week, and a lot of people don't know about it. Let me show you all the link here. This was um, only a, like one or two places even ran the story. The Daily News ran the story. Man found hanged in a tree in Manhattan Park. I think this is Brooklyn, and the details are even very vague. A man was found hanging from a tree from an apparent suicide, and they keep saying this shit is suicide. It was dis The discovery was made by a passerby walking through Fort Tryon Park near the banks of the Hudson River. I don't know my way around New York like that, my people. Is that Brooklyn somewhere? It sounds like Brooklyn. The man's name was not immediately released, but police believe he took his own life. They're saying the same shit over and over again. Family, all these brothers are not committing suicide. And they're not hanging themselves in goddamn trees. In Los Angeles, we're in outside of, well, on the outskirts of L.A., in Palmdale, a brother was found in a tree at the, at like a park type of area, which was very ritualistic. And in Victorville, which is about 50 miles from Palmdale, which is a straight shot from Palmdale, another brother was found in a tree, I think, at a library. Malcolm Harsh, I think that's his name. He was found in Victorville. Um, we did a story about that on FBA Times. Hold on, FBA um, let me just show y'all real quick. I just want to show y'all a few receipts on all this stuff. Okay, this is FBA Times. We did a, an article about that. Two men have been recently lynched. These two brothers right here, ladies and gentlemen. So this is some ritualistic type of stuff. And Palmdale, Victorville, these are places that's kind of in the boonies. 
Now, I've lived in Lancaster before, family. These places are real low-key, quiet at night, especially at night. I mean, you got a lot of desert, a lot of abandoned, quiet roads out there. It's real quiet and real eerie at night. So it's very easy for somebody to get caught up. You know, uh, much prayer and RIP go to those brothers. But man, a lot of these law enforcement, it looks like they're orchestrating this. The police, family, let's just get, let's, we don't have a police force no more. Let's just keep it real. Our brother Neely Fuller tells us we should stop referring to this stuff as police brutality. We don't have a police force in America anymore. We have race soldiers. There is no policing. Police meaning serve and protect. We, we're we being occupied militarily. We're being occupied militarily. And again, we saw some of the stuff that was happening at these protests where the race soldiers are out here busting people's tires. They're shooting innocent people, tear gassing innocent people, tear gassing children and women. That's not policing family. That's military occupation. We, we're militarily occupied. We have to look at it in that term and from those standpoints. This is like some Nazi shit. And these folks, again, are lined up. They allow their white supremacist brethren who are non-police to do a lot of their dirty work for them and then turn a blind eye to it. And they do a lot of revenge killings, too. They will have one of their buddies, they'll tell them where to go hang somebody so that you won't see cameras. They understand where places are where there are no cameras. For example, out in Long Beach, remember a black man was killed by a white supremacist and they never found the white supremacist. He got killed in broad daylight. It was an older black man who got shot at a park in Long Beach and they never caught the, the white supremacist who did it. That's because they didn't want to catch him. And they told the white supremacists how to do it and where to do it so that there wouldn't be any cameras. So these brothers were strategically hung where there are no cameras. In trees in public places. Brothers are not, brothers are not going to hang themselves in a damn tree in public. That's not how people generally commit no damn suicide. And the fact that the police are so quick to say there ain't no investigation, it's a suicide case closed, that shows that they're in on it. How do you know it's a, it, you haven't even done an investigation. How do you know it's a suicide to just dismiss it that quickly? You haven't done an investigation. And with the brother in Palmdale, when they said he hung himself, the family has come out and said, that's bullshit. Our, our brother, our son, our cousin, he wouldn't do that. So the families of these victims are even saying the, these investigations are bullshit. The family's saying it's bullshit. We don't hang ourselves. We don't do that, especially, the, it's, it's so rare for a brother to kill himself, number one, like that, and to do it publicly and for it to happen multiple times that's just they're reaching and they think we're stupid but they're using the i'm white and i say so narrative so family we got to get very serious about how to protect ourselves from race soldiers I always ask the question family what what should the the victims of the nazis what should they have done in nazi germany to stop the damn Nazis from putting people in ovens and camps and killing them. What could they have done to save themselves? I've been asking that question for over a decade. What could they have done to help themselves? What's up, Ola? Shout out to Ola. Everybody say what's up to Ola. See, we got to look at it from that perspective. We got to put ourselves in the mindset of us being in trains on our way to concentration camps. We have to look at it from that perspective. We start thinking, okay, we're going to have to tell somebody to come help us. Who are we going to tell? Let's, let's look at Nazi Germany. What could they have done? Let's say they used the same tactics we're using. 
these people, they're, they're being rounded up in Nazi Germany. Well, we need to go tell somebody. We need to go make some signs that says Holocaust victims matter. Was, would that work? Now, that will work to a degree where you get media attention, but then you got to do something outside of media attention. Are you going to write a letter to somebody and say, hey, the Nazis, who are you going to send the letter to? You dig? Um, who are you going to send the letter to? Well, we need Nazi reform. Is that what you're going to ask for? We need some allies and we need some Nazi reform. We need to take the Nazis around and show them that we human beings. Right? Right? Should they have had Nazi reform? Is my fan loud? Somebody said, turn my fan off. Is my fan too loud where it's disturbing you? Huh? I got my fan on so it don't get too hot. Is my fan good? We gonna write a petition and we gonna get everybody to sign it against the Nazis. Would, would that have worked? Huh? What would you do? What, what should they have done? Because see, we're doing a lot of game goofy shit that just ain't gonna work. I don't do I don't do petitions, y'all know that. I don't believe in police reform because you can't reform. We don't have police. We do not have police, family, so there is nothing to reform. You have card-carrying white supremacists who have infiltrated law enforcement. Up there in Washington, there was some white supremacist throwing up some the, the OK symbol with some of his white supremacist buddies, and he works for the police up there in Washington. And up in Seattle, shout out to everybody up there, by the way. In Seattle, they have taken over a city block and calls it, they call it Chaz or something like that, but it's a non-police zone, so they're actually, they're, they're armed protecting this place. It's, it's almost like a hippie commune to a certain degree. So they've taken over a city block out there. They're giving out free food. They're, it's almost, it's, it's kind of a hippie type of thing, but they're protecting it with guns. So, you know, look, they got a couple of white supremacists, undercovers running around up there. You got to be very careful. Now, a few days ago, up there in Seattle, there was a white Hispanic dude who drove his car through the crowd and then jumped out and he shot a brother. And they didn't even pursue this dude. They didn't even pursue this guy. Let me show the video of this. I think I showed this before, but no, 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 that ain't it. I want to find the video. They didn't even pursue the dude who did it. He actually turned himself in to the police. He ran and turned himself into the police. Where's the video? I want to find that video. I want to find the actual video of it. I had it up. Um, usually I have this stuff. Hold on. Uh, usually I have it on my um, gram. Hold on. Let me look at. Let me look and see if I got it on YouTube. Hold on one second. Let me look at my um, Twitter. Let me see if I can find it on my Twitter feed real quick. Because I want to show y'all this. I want to show y'all this. This is heavy. Hold on. Y'all bear with me. Bear with me. Uh, yeah, I don't, come on, man. Damn, I'm going to be typing old typos. All right. Come on, thing. Come on, man. All right, hold on one second. I'm about to find it in a second. Okay, I think this is it. Okay. Okay, we did a story about it on FBA Times. Okay, this is... Okay, let me go to FBA Times, and I hope we got the actual video on there. Okay. Okay. You start fighting as the cops, the not only are you fighting sorry, sorry. protesters, you're also fighting... Okay. Meetings. Okay, this is it right here. Let's let's look at this right here. Okay, where? Okay, this is it right here. Wait. No. Okay. Like your. Okay, so this is. I think this is over there in that Chaz area. 
or before, somewhere around there. This is in Seattle. I want y'all to see this. Now, this guy drove through the crowd. Now, remember, this is in Seattle. They got snipers. I think this was before they created the whole Chaz area, I think. But this guy drove through the crowd. Look at this. Feed, like restaurants and like other businesses in the area who were like, hey, fuck. Hold on. Oh, oh, right. oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, he just, just shot. Okay, y'all saw that? Okay, he, the guy in the car shot this brother right here. All right? The guy in the car, the brother ran out to stop him from running people over, and he got shot. Oh, God. Right there, he got shot. The brother got shot. The oh, dude. Uh, well, uh, Wait. Uh, that, that guy is meeting some swift. So the guy jumps out the car. He got the gun the still. Now, he has a gun, and he has a clip, an extra clip strapped onto the gun. So this was definitely planned. This was definitely planned. Okay. Is screaming and why we can't hear them. Uh, this dude immediately started screaming. I apologize for that. I didn't realize he was Now look how screaming. casually this uh, dude is walking around. Now, this dude just ran through the crowd, shot somebody. Now, there's snipers all over the place. Notice nothing is happening to this guy. Absolutely nothing is happening to him. No, no, per, nobody's pursuing him or nothing. It looked like it was coming straight down the street. Look, okay, he got the gun with the extra clip in his hand. Nobody's pursuing him. The police didn't pursue this guy at all. I was going for the poses. The guy has a gun. Oh God. He's walking through the crowd. Nothing. No cop. Nothing. Oh nothing. He's oh, running through the crowd with Wait, a gun. Is that the dude? Oh, fuck. No, I think that's a protester that um oh, God. ran in and grabbed it. Okay, so this guy, family, the police literally did not apprehend this dude at all. He ran up to a group of police and said, hey, I shot somebody. You know, I had to shoot him because, and then they kind of took him as if they were in on it. Come to find out, this dude's brother works for the Seattle police. This dude's brother is a cop. This was clearly orchestrated. This was orchestrated. So this is the type of shit that they're doing. They were attacking him in his car, though. Somebody said that. No, that's the, the excuse they're trying to use. He tried to run people down. He tried to run people down. So the police are in on this stuff, guys. There was another case I saw where people were marching. It was a brother... He was marching, and they were protesting, and they were walking behind the police. A cop stopped deliberately. The brother bumped into the cop, and then they started attacking the brother for assaulting the cop. They're doing every dirty trick you can imagine. We don't have a police force at this moment, guys. Ain't no police force. We only have race soldiers and military occupation. You understand? Let's go back to Nazi Germany. What should the people have done? Knowing that they, they and their families, they were being taken to concentration camps. Now, they fought like at the last minute, but it was too late. See, black folks, we wait too. We wait until the last damn minute and before we do something. No, 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 no. They should have took out as many Nazis as they could with them. If, if you knew you were about to die, even before then, you don't wait right until the death camps you're about to pull up. If you know you're about to die, you're supposed to take as many people with you as possible. You, even when the threat is there and you saw that the threat was going there, they should have been locating Nazis and killing them. The, you know, after the fact, they do a lot of books and films, like kind of revenge plots, like in Glorious Bastards, the Quentin Tarantino movie, they had like Nazi hunters, stuff like that. They should have been doing that in real life. They should have been tracking down the Nazis one by one. Somebody said doing a Micah Johnson. They should have been tracking them down one by one, like Chris Dorner. Like, yeah, somebody said like Chris Dorner. 
They should have been getting at them. Under family, those Nazis, they portray themselves as these supermen, Aryan god bullshit. These were human beings that had homes and lives that could be touched. They could have been touched. And they should have been touched. Yeah? They should have been touched. Even before it got to six million people getting murdered like that. Yeah, the show Hunters, yeah. They got these shows now about hunting Nazis at, because now they're learning what they should have done now. They're like, look, if anything happens like this again, this is what we need to be on. They understand most of the Nazis went to Argentina. I know this. But they should have been hunting them damn Nazis. I see a lot of people do this. They put the stuff on the Crips and Bloods. Nah. No, you the Crip in the fucking blood. You the fucking Crip in the blood. The Crip in blood is you. We put this thing, where the gangbangers at? Nigga, you the gangbanger. The gangbanger is you. Let's not put this stuff just on the Crips and Bloods and all that. The gangbanger is you. Everybody's a damn gangbanger, or should be, in a war. Y'all stop doing that. Man, where the thugs at? The thug image really is a lot of media propaganda. The media, they portray an image that there's just roving gangs of thugs in black society running everywhere. That's a media concoction. It's really not in real life. The thug is you. They just use the Crip blood gang, thug gang propaganda as a proxy for you. You understand? When they run around talking about all oh, these thugs, these fucking thugs sagging their pants, running around, robbing and stealing from their community, they're talking about you. That's just the proxy for every black person. That's just them justifying harming every black person. They're talking about you. White supremacists don't see a difference between you and the thug stereotype that they've created. They don't see a difference. All this, well, if you just pulled your pants up, family. Black people in the 1960s were out here in suits and ties and getting rocks, dogs, and hose pipes thrown at them. They were saying the same thing <clears throat> about Dr. King, Medgar Evers, and all of these church folks in the 60s who were protesting against white supremacy. They were calling them thugs, communists, the same thing. Com watch these words. They were calling Dr. King a communist, a, a, a lefty, a leftist communist. They were doing all that shit back then. Oh, he's funded by the Jews, which is what they're saying now. George Soros is funding, that means the Jews are funding the Negroes. They're using the same propaganda. They, have, they haven't changed nothing. All of us are the thugs. And you know what? I'll be that. I'll be that. See, we got this thing in black society where we want to see... Um, we don't want to. We don't want to be a part of the stereotype that they create for us. So we go out of our way. Oh, I'm not a thug. No, oh, I'm not. All lives matter. No, but at this, you be trying to explain the shit. But at this juncture, we're talking about black lives. But just because black lives matter, that doesn't necessarily mean your life doesn't matter too. Shut the fuck up and stop explaining to these fucking white supremacists. They know. You ain't telling them something they don't know. They're not dumb. They're using code words to justify harming you. I'm a fucking thug then. Because if you harm me and my family, I'm thugging the fuck out on you. Oh yeah, I'm going to be every damn stereotype you created for niggas. I'm going to be that. Every stereotype that you have of niggas harm my family. I'm not going to be with no damn Benjamin Crump and all these people. You harm my family. You kill shooting people in the back. You do my family like that. I'm going to be that fucking thug. Every negative stereotype of a nigga you have, I'm that nigga. Every, every single one, I'm going to be that thug, that violent ass thug on your ass and everybody in your community. 
I'll be that all day. That's the problem. I don't mind your bullshit stereotypes. Hell, we out here trying to play Mr. Nice. Niggas out here get, making barbecue sandwiches for the police and still getting killed? Nah, fuck all that. Nah, not me. See how that Mr. Nice Guy thing turns out? Oh, St. Louis, the brother up here making barbecue, free barbecue to the police, and they still shot this brother. Nah, I'm going to be that thug, yeah. Y'all niggas are thugs, you're goddamn right. Now touch my family, and I'm going to show you just how thuggish I can get. Ain't going to be no praying, ain't going to be no press conference, me up here crying, and my lady up here with a bunny ruckus wig on or whatever, because niggas get, you see who the coons are, your kids get killed and niggas start cooning out, now don't y'all be out here looting now, y'all just going to fuck up my check. Dumbass niggas. I'm not that. Everybody ain't on the coon train. Everybody ain't on the coon train. Everybody can't be bought off. See, that's the thing. They gonna fuck around and kill somebody's family who, who ain't gonna be bought off. You dig? They gonna kill the right one. You dig? Somebody ain't going to be bought off. And it's going to go way to another level. You there? But I'm not trying to explain anything to these folks. And the thing is, what we have, we got a lot of riders out here. A lot of riders out here. Yeah, somebody got mad at Ice-T. Ice-T said, hey, Ice-T said some real shit. And I retweeted him. He said, look. You kill my family, I'm killing you and everybody with you, and I'll gladly go to jail. And then they tried to report his tweet, and they couldn't report his tweet. And he and I said, yeah, yeah, I said it, and I, and I stand by the shit. Yeah, you kill, kill my kids, touch my family, I'm coming to get you and everybody with you. And I'll gladly go to jail. Because the thing is, the thing, if you can't protect your family, what are you here for? Every mammal should be able to protect their offspring. If you cannot protect your children, you don't need to be here. You understand what? I'm going to say that again. The mechanism of mammals is to be able to protect their offspring. If you can't protect your offspring, your ass don't deserve to be here. You need to get wiped the fuck off. If you can't protect your family. And we got a lot of these coons and mammies and hood rats out here who don't give a damn about protecting their families. They don't give a damn about protecting their children. And what we have are a lot of buck broken Negroes and plantation Jezebels. Not even they're not even mammies yet. We got plantation Jezebels. Jezebels out here, little baby bed wenches and little bed bucks. That's what we're talking about on today's theme. We're talking about the seeds of hood rats. Now, let's be clear. In most of the protests around the country, we're thorough. Brothers and sisters are thorough, especially the sisters. Got to take my hat off to these sisters out here. These beautiful black women are out here putting in work. I love that. As you now see, things are starting to be co-opted. When things begin to get co-opted and more of these fake white allies come through, they start bringing their buck-broken, plantation-broken Negroes with them. Today around the country, they had all lives matter, all black lives matter. This is some shit that the white LGBT community has orchestrated so that they can try to undermine everything. They're trying to piggyback on the black lives matter movement. And they're trying to say, well, all black lives matter, meaning all trans black people. So in New York, there were just... Tens of thousands of people out there, white people, 
marching for the lives of black trans. Fake as fuck, by the way. Out here in North Hollywood, not North, in West Hollywood. And I was in Hollywood earlier, went down to Harold's Chicken. I saw white people with I can't breathe mask with rainbow clothes. So they're co-opting our shit to latch on to it so that they can get resources and benefits. And a lot of black people are calling them out for this. But them running around talking about black trans lives matter. When we say all, when we say black lives matter, that includes them. We don't separate ourselves from other black people. That's the white LGBT community doing the same shit people did in the 1960s. Try to undermine the civil rights movement by bringing in gender. Gender and sexuality. And they're trying to do the same thing now. And family, when the white LBGT come along, they got all their buck broken Negroes with them. I've seen a lot of electric slide contests today with Negroes out here showing out in front of the, their white benefactors who they want to be benefactors because these, these white people aren't even giving them anything yet. All these people, white folks are talking about black trans lives matter. If black trans lives matter, how come y'all white LGBT people are not giving them anything? The white LGBT community, they don't share any resources with the black trans community. They practice the same anti-black racism as the straight community. The white LGBT community is faker than a $3 bill. They don't do shit for the black trans community. This is why so many black trans people get killed because black trans people have to reduce themselves to sex work that's very dangerous. So they get out there on that track and high risk neighborhoods dealing with high risk tricks, usually the Ed Buck types, and these are the ones who's killing them. And then the white LGBT community comes along and capitalizes and then exploits the killing of these people who would not be killed if they had some of the resources from the white LGBT community that they get from exploiting them. You understand? The white LGBT community really is just as racist as the straight community and doubly violent. They're very violent towards gay black people and straight black people too. Yeah? So you have a lot of buck broken Negroes and plantation broken bedwinches out here. And we got to be very clear. How do they get broken? Usually, they get broken by hood rat mamas. They hood rat ass mama broke them. That's where a lot of the buck breaking starts. And I'm very specific about the type of parent. I'm talking about hood rats, not black women as a group. I'm talking, I'm talking specifically hood rats. Some of these broken hood rats further break their children. Some of these niggas out here, bussified dudes, they were broken by their mothers first, by their hood rat mammies, because they taught their sons how to be non-threatening instead of teaching their son, because these women don't, they don't know how to raise a warrior. They ain't never really been around no man long enough to get the game themselves. These are hood rats. Hood rats are beholden to white zaddy and the crumbs that white zaddy throws off to them. So hood rats never really have a clear understanding of what warriorhood is, meaning calm, collective planning and strategic military thought. They think a warrior is a goofy nigga trying to be a thug. Another butt broken nigga who's trying to fight through his manhood. You understand what I'm saying? So they think that teaching a, a young dude how to be a warrior is teaching them how to be loud like them. You understand? So you see a lot of these little niggas out here raised by these mammies, these plantation hood rats, and they have the same emotional characteristics. So when it's time to get busy, niggas start getting loud. Hell no! 
Oh, clapping their fucking hands. Hell no, nigga. Fuck all that shit. That's, that's hood rat rage shit. All that loud emotional shit. And unfortunately, a lot of that loud emotional shit get them caught up with the race soldiers. When you get around race soldiers, what do niggas do? We keep seeing the same shit over and over. Niggas out here yelling and fighting like they mama. And that shit immediately, immediately gets brothers killed. Because we're in a war. You're in a goddamn war. You ain't supposed to be out there doing all that emotional shit. You're supposed to conduct yourself like a, a soldier who's in a war. You keep your mouth shut, name, rank, boom. That's it. Talk to my lawyer. Well, we thought you did this. Okay, well, uh, we'll figure it out when I get booked. Name, rank, let's talk to my lawyer. You dig? But when you get all these emotional niggas raised by these hood rats, a race soldier run up on them, these niggas get to talking like they mom. You ain't about to do shit to me. Hell no. You ain't about to do nothing. I ain't about to go to jail. You ain't going to handcuff me. Right there is where they got your emotional ass. Y'all better learn the fucking game. That's exactly what they wanted. They escalate that in you. They, were, they know how to push your buttons. Hey, you look like somebody who robbed a liquor store. Hell no. I ain't robbing no goddamn liquor store. Hell no. Hell no. Fuck that. I missed it, man. What the? What you want me to turn around for? Well, you're resisting now. Hell no. You can do all that hell no and then get shot and then justified shooting you by, by orchestrating your emotions. They know how to push your emotions because they study niggas. They know you were raised by a hood rat. Yeah? So when they run up on you talking about, hey, you look like a suspect. Cuffs in the front or the back. Let's go. All right? If I'm a suspect, take me in. I'm not resisting. Let's go. I'll talk to him. If, you, if I'm a suspect, if I look like somebody who's a suspect, okay, well, well, my lawyer handle it. That's how I get down. Because number one, I ain't scared of jail. Number one, I know I didn't do nothing and they're trying to get a rise out of me. I'm not resisting. All right, we'll figure it out. I expect it. If they run up on me talking about you, we, you look like you did something. Well, this is a white supremacist. I'm in a war, so let me, I'm a prisoner of war. Let me keep my mouth shut. Okay, cuffs in the front of the back. Because you got, I'm, I'm in a situation where I can't really get busy now. All that yelling and screaming and all that shit ain't going to help me now. I, I've been caught behind enemy lines. So I'm surrendering until I get to a position of strength. You understand? I'm going to surrender until I get into a position of strength. That's strategic talk. That's logic right there. And when you get down like that, usually they'll just let you go. Because they know they can't go down there and book you for nothing. Now they can't book you for resisting. When they run up on me with that shit, I tell them, yeah, all right, let's take me in then. If, if I'm a suspect, I'm not going to really, well, I'm investigating. Well, I'm, I'll talk to my lawyer. If, I, if I'm a suspect, that means I'm detained. Well, you're not detained. I'm just investigating. Well, I'm going to have to talk to my lawyer, but I'm not resisting. So you want to take me in? Let's, let's go. All right, well, you're going out of here. There it is. When you get down like that, they can't do nothing because, see, they get y'all niggas on resisting. That's how they get you. They know how to push a button and, and make up some false charge. You, they know you're going to get to wailing around about what the hell you didn't do and all this old shit. The minute you start getting emotional, they got you. You dig? The minute you start wailing around, stay Cool. Because a lot of folks don't want to believe that they're in a war. A lot of folks on some dumb shit. Niggas out here on some stupid shit. They don't want to believe that they're in a war right now. Hey, what? I know my rights. The hell you talking about? I didn't rob the Piggly Wiggly. I wasn't even at no goddamn Piggly Wiggly. Hold on. Let me call my I was at Raymond house. Shit. Let me call. Put the phone down. No, man. I'm going to call Raymond. Raymond. Boom, boom, boom. He shoot your ass. Well, this nigga had a gun and he was resisting. His, his, he pulled he pulled something out. It, it looked like a gun. You in a fucking war. Stop being emotional. Stop being emotional. When they get you behind enemy lines, cool the fuck out. 
When they get you behind enemy lines, they got you. You're a prisoner of war at the moment. Act like one. Okay. If I'm a suspect, well, shit, I'm going to talk to my lawyer. I'm not going to say anything that's going to be incriminating. Sir, I'm going to be very respectful. Oh, shit, if I done robbed the Piggly Wiggly. If you think that, I'm definitely going to talk to my lawyer with all due respect. Well, we're just going to have to detain you. Okay, the cuff's in the front or the back. Which, is, which one you want to do? And as per the law, I will exercise my right to remain silent. You just stay cool on their ass. Don't be afraid of the cuffs. I'm not afraid of no fucking cuffs and the, being in the back of the, that funky police car. And police cars have the same smell. It, I done been in the back of a police car a million times. That shit don't scare me. Niggas be scared because niggas ain't never been to jail. Niggas ain't never been in a police car. So niggas get scared and don't know how to act. No, just stay cool. Stay cool. Don't do all that yelling and, and screaming and all that old shit. Usually, if they're doing all that, this is a racially charged um inquiry they're trying to get a rise out of you i want y'all to understand that they're trying to get a rise out of you i'm just telling dudes how to think like men and be strategic because niggas been raised by their mama they start acting like they fucking mama because they saw their mama acting a damn fool anytime there was a problem i'm blaming the rats that raised these bitch niggas too who act stupid as fuck because they all their lives whenever there was a problem they mama got to yelling and acting a fucking fool, and that's all they know. If the, the Section 8 check was late or whatever, hell no, where the hell is my check? My check folks be on here at the on the second. It's the fourth of the month. My kid needs some milk. You know, they used to they mama talking that stupid ass shit. And as a kid, when you see if there's a problem, I got to get loud. If I get loud and start barking at everybody, I'll get something done. You go to the store with your mama. I need a refund. I wore this dress. That dress was too goddamn small. I got the receipt. I need a motherfucking refund. Oh, shit. Well, here, ma'am, here's your money. And a, a black boy looking at this, oh, shit. If I want to get shit done, if I want to get money or whatever, I just got to just be loud. And everything that you learn from your mammy works against you as a man. That shit don't work for you as a man. You start doing that, number one, you do that at school, they'll expel your ass. Oh, this little nigga's a threat. He's yelling at a teacher, fuck that teacher, I want some chocolate milk and I want to get some chocolate milk right now. Oh, nigga, we about to expel your little black ass, Jamal. Oh, Jamal is in here yelling. I think it, the teacher, the little, little boy, eight years old, and the teacher's talking about, well, she, well, Jamal was yelling at me, and I thought he was going to rape me with his little old nigga dick. His little baby nigga dick was going to rape me. So I, I, I can't, I can't. He's going to have to be expelled. Yeah? You can't do all that yelling as a boy, as a male in real life. Society works against you for doing that. And you can't do all that shit in no street. You can't get in no street business trying to bark on niggas in the street. You get stomped the fuck out real quick trying to yell at some niggas on some street shit. Niggas don't play that. And in the corporate world, you can't run around doing all that yelling and screaming and all that old bullshit if you, if you ain't going to back it up with them hands. Yeah? Yeah? So this is what dudes learn. They learn all of these emotional characteristics from their hood rat mammies. No man around. You didn't have a man around. There's a lot of us in here. We're almost at 8,000 people. Come on in here. Hit that thumbs up button. We're having a deep conversation tonight. But like I said, what they these hood rats teach these boys how to be emotional without any type of logic, without understanding military science whatsoever, not understanding military strategy whatsoever, and it works against them. And they, they do the same thing to their daughters to a certain degree. What they do with their daughters, they teach their daughters that um, sexual looseness is the answer to everything. Because that's all they, when you, the, the hood rats, and you know, there's different niggas coming in and out of the house, you don't really have anything to offer 
you can't hold a nigga. So you try to hold a nigga long enough with sex. And that's all they teach their daughters. These hood rats are so dependent on white daddy. They become so dependent on zaddy, the government. They don't really know how to function around a man. If a man who's a guy who is is a thorough dude who is a provider, they won't even know how to deal with that type of nigga because of the hood rat mentality they have. So they think, okay, I'm still going to get my little section eight. So if a nigga comes around here talking like he got some sense, well, shit, I ain't got to listen to him. I, you know, I can be the perpetual teenager because, hell, I'm on a plantation. My bills are paid. I get to smoke weed. I get this little section eight. So I ain't gotta li I ain't gotta listen to no man. That's why you hear all that independent bullshit. I I do what I want. Ain't no nigga gonna tell me what to do. And you go to the club and the DJs be pumping your head up with all that stupid shit. Ladies, are you making all your money? And can't no niggas tell you what to do? Say ho, ho. You up there with a bottle of Ciroc? Ho, with your drunk, funky ass weave wearing motherfucker. Ho. They know how to play up on your damn, your stupidity. Everybody knows how to play up on your goddamn stupidity. He's sitting at the house eating crab legs with weave hair all over the place, funky, dirty ass house. You don't know how to deal with no real ass dude because you, you got white daddy, the government. You getting all your basic nigga needs met. Weed, weave, crab legs, Musical dicks. Just different niggas coming in. Uh, now, that's just plantation shit. Same thing on the plantation. Plantation breeder. Same thing. They had these hood rats on the... They would treat them like hood rats on the plantation. The breeders. They would have the breeders just sit up, chilling, and multiple bucks come in, breed them, and they get the baby, sell the baby off. Same mentality. You know, let's keep it real. So when you get a daughter, you start teaching your daughter all your little hood rat characteristics. So instead of teaching your children and your daughter how to be a warrior, you tell them the answer to everything is you popping your goddamn coochie. You understand? You're trying to use flat back hoeing because you're not even a good hoe. You, you were raised by a hood rat. See, you're not even being taught to be a good hoe. You're being taught to be a, a, a low-level flat back hoe. There's levels to the hoeing. There's some good thorough hoes out here. I'm not a hoe hater. But some of these women raised by hood rats, they teach them how to be little punk ass, flat back, $40 hoes. With no game whatsoever. And all they know how to do is pop their ass. Let me tell you something about the hoeing business. Ladies, if you're in a position where you ain't spitting for your money, because a hoe, a good hoe, has to spit for her money. The minute you pull your pussy out, that means you done lost all your negotiating skills. A good hoe knows how to negotiate long enough before the pussy comes out. The minute your pussy comes out, you ain't got no more negotiating skills. That's a flat back hoe mentality. They just throw the pussy on out there for a little flat fee. That's low level hoeing. If we're going to talk about some game here on a street level. That's why a lot of these women need some folks to give them some goddamn instructions. And now we got OnlyFans out here, but still you need some instructions as far as that. Some of y'all still need some, some, some instructions with your OnlyFans page out here too. You understand? Because some of y'all doing too damn much on the OnlyFans. Yeah? But see... Hoeing is all about spitting. Your mouthpiece got to be real tight too. You got to have a hell of a mouthpiece to be real thorough in the game to really know how to finesse a good damn trick. Because a hoe and a trick, they're in a battle with each other. And the P, that's your coach who's going to tell you how to manipulate your way through the game so you don't get caught up by the trick. Because the trick got just as much game as some of the hoes out here. And when the trick's running game on you, he done made you the damn trick, which makes you an even worse hoe. 
I don't want to get too old school with some street shit on here. I'm just trying to give y'all some of the game from every level. You understand? That's where the thorough peas come from. A lot, of, a lot of folks say, well, how come these women out here hoeing and they got peas, they got pimps under their back? Well, the pimps, those are, those are the cats who's going to really lace you with some good game and give you some instructions. And, 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 and be your confidant, be your companion, and, and keep you in a position where you're not getting manipulated and finessed by the tricks. You understand? They're not ready. That, that might be a little too heavy for them. We don't want to get that deep. We might not want to get that deep. <laughs> you understand? See, you got a lot of renegades out here. See, that's what only OnlyFans is like, renegade central. OnlyFans is like, it's, it's renegade central. You know? You go on OnlyFans and stick a dildo up your ass and get a little $8 a month and all that old bullshit. You know? But some of the, the old school players, no. We, we ain't about to be all up on that internet. You better go out here and, and, and touch money for real, for real. Because that's the only way you're going to really know that game. And that's how you're going to get that game and get that paper for real, for real. Yeah, a lot of renegade hoes out here who don't want no instructions. And let me go deeper with that thing. That's why a lot of these women got to get some peas because the peas is going to give them some game before they get burnt out. A lot of women, y'all be in the game and y'all try to test this game out and you get burnt out. When a hoe is 24 years old, that means you're over the hill in the game. Hoes are usually young in this game. 18 to 24, that's the prime age for a lot of women in the game. By the time you're 24, you're getting phased out of the game right now. Now, you got a lot of these older women who are in their 40s and 30, late 30s trying to get in the game, and they might make a little twos and fuse and all that. But some of the prime people out here getting some paper in the game are those early 20s, those type of women. And by the time you try to renegade your shit and learn the game on your own, you get burnt out because that means you're going to make a lot of mistakes, and those mistakes are going to be negatives on your mouthpiece. You understand? I'm talking to some of these OnlyFans girls out here, just about some street shit. A lot of y'all, y'all make all these mistakes, and that all the mistakes you make learning the game, because you're going to have to learn through trial and error if you're out here renegading, and those mistakes are going to turn into baggage, which is going to make you a lousy, good-for-nothing hoe. Your hoeing is going to be whack because there's going to be too much baggage attached to it and you're going to be sour to the game and you're not going to be able to get out the game properly. You understand? Because now the tricks done ran a whole bunch of games and cons on your ass. Law enforcement done got at your ass a few times. So you done got yourself fucked up in the game without getting somebody who's lacing you with some instructions. I'm just telling you the difference between learning the game from your stupid ass mama, who was a, a, a welfare hoe, or a nigga who's thorough in the game, who's throwing down some serious P, who can really lace your boots with what you need to do with this game out here. You understand? This is all I'm saying. I'm just talking the game in general. Yeah? It sounds like a sad life. No, 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 man. Life is what you make it. Nigga, there's good, bad, and thorough in any type of business you get in. There's good, bad, and thorough. If you're going to get in the game, whatever the fuck you get in, you better be good in that shit so that you can get the fuck out the game. Anything you get in, you better be good and you better master that shit. And a lot of folks say, well, I don't want to be in the square world. I want to get out here and I'll sling a little pussy or whatever. But there's rules to that shit too. I'm just telling y'all, whatever you do, there's going to be some rules to it. There's a, a right way and a wrong way to do anything. That's slanging pussy too. There's a right way and a wrong way to do that shit. You understand? And the problem is we got a lot of people out here who value attention over money. Again, a lot of these women raised by their hoe-ass mamas, these single mama hood rats, lacing you with whack, dumb-ass game that kept her ass in the projects till she was 60. Your, your mama's still 60 years old living in fucking projects. She's teaching you the same dead-end-ass game. 
You understand? So now, let's bring it back to where we are now. When we have these protests out here, Again, you got a lot of sisters who's thorough. You got a lot of thorough sisters out here. But when the LGBT community comes out, again, they bring a lot of their game goofy Negroes with them. And this was at a protest today. I've been seeing a lot of this. This right here. The police cars out here. This chick goes out. This is my opportunity to get some damn attention. She looked like she's a stripper somewhere. And this is her. Look at us, sis. Look at us, sis. Look at us, sis. Now notice, it sounds like a, an LGBT Negro up here egging her on. So sounds like she's with some LGBT niggas. Okay? Sounds like she with that crowd. Okay, a queen, so she's with this queen. She's, she's with them. Okay, now family, this was a chick, she looks like a stripper, she looked like she stripped somewhere, and game goofy as fuck, she ain't nobody giving her no instructions, you can tell ain't no pee around, nobody's lacing her with nothing, this is some stripper where she can't strip right now. The strip clubs are closed down. She's not getting no attention. She's not getting her little old 40, 50 fucking dollars at the damn low budget strip club where she works. So there's cameras out now that everybody's looking. Oh, this is an opportunity for me to get my damn attention right now. I can get some damn attention by twerking in front of the damn police as if that's some kind of activism. I've been seeing a, a, a couple of these little funky hood rats getting in front of the police twerking. And a lot of them are clicked in with the, they come out there with the LGBT crowd. I noticed that. I noticed that common denominator. No, she ain't on drugs. The drugs is the attention. Attention is drugs. Attention is drugs. So... The plantation mentality is being used. These people are out here waging war. You got white people out here training and got guns and they got tear gas and these Negroes are out here doing plantation shit. These niggas are out here popping pussy. Not all of them, thankfully, but just the ones that's on that goofy shit. These are the seeds of hood rats. That's going to have to go. Because if that's all you got to offer, you ain't got nothing else to offer. We need warriors right now. Again, these are people letting the dominant society know, I'm submitting. You're acting like you're doing something revolutionary, but you're saying that I'm submitting. I'm submitting to you. And also, again, this is, I value attention more than freedom. This is internet cloud. I, I get people to look at me. I get attention that my hood rat mama couldn't give me. I get attention that I didn't get as a, as a child. And I can only get attention by spreading my ass open real wide and doing splits with my cootie cat hair all up in the air. That's the only way I can get attention. See, we got to get niggas like this up out the mix. See, niggas who are valuing attention. And again, the white LGBT community, they start bringing these niggas around. 
they know how to bring certain folks around them that's going to undermine everything because that type of shit really plays into the stereotypes. Okay, these niggas ain't disciplined. Why should we do it? Why should we acquiesce to their demands? That puts us all in jeopardy because they're like, oh shit, we just, let's just weigh these niggas down. The, more of them will start twerking pretty soon. Oh, they're not, they're harmless. These niggas are harmless. All they want to do is twerk for us. If we take them in the back, run up in them a couple of times, oh, they'll be good. You understand? That gives the impression that we're not serious and we don't have no punishment mechanism for this game goofy bullshit right here. You dig? And not just the women. And I've talked about dudes before. This was in D.C. earlier. This was in D.C. earlier. The dudes were out here doing the same shit. It That's enough of that, enough of that, enough of that, okay? So the dude's out here doing the same shit. Dude's out here doing the same game goofy nonsense. Yeah? Out there in D.C., I done told y'all about these niggas in D.C. So these niggas out here campaigning to be bed bucks. Same niggas raised by these game goofy hood rats. They were buck broken by their mothers. And that's what the white LGBT community brings out. They bring them niggas out. And they'll elevate those niggas. Notice this is why they be elevating the Billy Porters. Because they understand these niggas, they want what they mama want. They want white attention. Attention is a drug. And if you can get attention from white people, then you've made it. Getting sexual attention from white people, that really means you made it. That's why in the hood, you'll see a lot of these hood rats with these little light-skinned kids. Because these hood rats then laid up with, with a zaddy. You dig? That's the, the pinnacle of hood radishness. Getting you a baby by a Mexican or a white man. You've made it in hood rat land if you've done that. And this is what they teach their children. Become sexually available for white people. Yeah? And that's the problem. So the thing is, family, you have a, a very interesting dynamic out here with these white supremacists. Because of all this ally shit people think, just because, and I've said this before, just because people are out here marching with you, that doesn't necessarily mean they're an ally. An ally is somebody who's going to actually do something to benefit and help you. And I'm talking about something tangible. Or if they can punish other white people for harming you. Those are the, are the two things that make a person an ally. Are, are you, number one, a white person who is punishing another white person for harming a black person? Or two, are you helping me, a black person, get tangibles for me? Not for you, and you will throw me a crumb. No. Let's be clear. When I say tangibles, I mean for us. Because... Let me tell you something, the white LGBT community, they're getting tangibles left and right with their little parades and all Black Lives Matter and we got to do something for the black trans. What they'll do is do all these marches for black trans and then say, hey, to help black trans, donate to We the People, donate to the Human Rights Foundation. And you look at the Human Rights Foundation and all these nonprofits, it's all white people in the treasure, the, 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 the board of directors and everything. So all the money gets funneled to the white people and they buy the trans people condoms. They don't give you shit. 
They tr the trans community is the new feed the world. The trans black people are the new hungry Africans. White supremacist society, they always get some poor downtrodden black person to parade around and then say, hey, give me donations to help this poor downtrodden Negro. That's what abolitions, the abolitionists started that shit. They were doing that back then with the abolitionists. They would put out these images of black people enslaved. Hey, look at those black people down there in the South who are so downtrodden. Now, yeah, we sold the nigga to the Southerners, but that's another story, okay? We we, 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 we repented. Yeah, yeah, we sold the nigga to the Southerners because that's really what the Civil War was about a lot. A lot of that was, hey, wait a minute. What the fuck you mean we can't build our economy and slavery is wrong and you sold this nigga to me? I bought that nigga in Massachusetts. The fuck you talking about? Now it's all abolitionists. Bitch, I bought this nigga in Philadelphia. <laughs> That's what the Southerners were tripping about. You sold these niggas to me. And then want to turn around and make money talking about how bad it is that you sold him to me. Oh, hell no. Civil War. Oh, the slave trade started in the damn um, um, Northeast, up in Boston, Mass in, in, in Philly, New England. That's where the slave trade was really orchestrated, to be honest. The financial aspect of it. Oh, man, them Quakers, they had slaves too. All of them up there in the New England, all that shit. There's still slave plantations up there now. But the white supremacists, they stay finessing. They play both sides of the conversation and the argument. So they were like, look, send us money. We're going to try to help free these poor black people. Send us money. That was a big finesse. That was a big hustle. And they've always done that. And remember in the 70s and 80s, they would have the little African kid. Now they do it with Latino kids down in South America. But back in the 70s and 80s, remember, it was always be a bigger, a little old African boy, a little nappy head with flies on him, a little big old stomach. He's walking around with a cup looking for water and shit. He walk, look at him. Look at him. He's walking around with flies. Zzz, look at little Damiano. It'd be Sally Struthers doing the voiceover. This is Damiano. Damiano's a poor, downtrodden little Ethiopian boy. He hasn't eaten in three days. His village has no water. For only $2 a day, we can give him the rice and the grain he needs. And, you know, they make sure Damiano's looking real sad in the camera. And sometimes they make him say something. <laughs> It'll be real sad. They, they show a little B-roll of Damiano looking. Then it'll show him crying. They're like, look, nigga, cry in front of the camera. <laughs> Flicking the flies off him. <laughs> so please give $3 a day to Damiano. Then they have him say something. I need food, please. <laughs> I'm Sally Struthers. <laughs> this is little Damiano. What'd you have to say, Damiano? I'm hungry. I need food. See? Send us money. So they really play the bullshit up. They really play the bullshit up and they make a gang of money and Damiano don't get shit. They don't give his little ass nothing. He's still in that village looking for water. They don't give him shit. Yeah? The same... <laughs> Damiano's still looking for his chick. <laughs> That's the same finesse game. And now they do, they're doing it to the trans people. Oh, look at the trans person. Oh, this, this trans black person. All black trans lives matter. Now, the, the percentage of trans people getting killed is so small and minimal. But just the fact that they're making a big movement out of it. Because, see, now... You know, you can make a big movement out of it and you don't have to give nobody a lot. Even if you gave them crumbs, it ain't even a lot. Yeah? So the, the, the black trans community who they don't give a shit about because the black trans are getting killed by the white LGBT. 
So they're the new starving African. Yeah, that's why they keep they keep promoting Dwayne Wade and his son. Yeah. So it's a, it's a game. It's a finesse they're running. So we got to call that out. See, they get tangible. So when I say we need to get tangibles, I mean specifically for us. If they are, are going to be an ally, they're going to have to make sure that we get specific tangibles, not them being able to exploit us. Because that's all they do is exploit us. Let me tell you something. They also treat overweight black women like the... The, not a quite a starving African child, but they all they also do that with them too, but but on another level. What they do, they get overweight black women and bring them in, and 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 elevate them, really to make themselves look better, and also it brings a lot of props to them for being liberal and look look I'm embracing I'm embracing Lizzo. So we're not racist. So keep supporting us. See, we have a rainbow coalition here where we're supporting everybody as long as it's a big fat black woman. That's very that's very particular. As long as it's a big black fat woman. Yeah, Oprah. See, we're we're inclusive. So you guys want a diversity? Well, come on over here, Gabby Sidibe. Come on over here, Lizzo. Come on over here, Lonnie Love. You see? Notice these women don't never, they don't ever have any problems with these overweight black women, but I always said this. Whenever an attractive black woman comes around, they give them hell. Have y'all noticed about all these black actresses complaining about how they're treated on set by these white women? There's a sister on a, and I don't watch none of these shows, by the way. But there's a show, Glee. I don't really watch Glee. This story here, Samantha Ware says, Leah Mitchell, Michelle, whatever, threatened to have her fired, didn't like her from day one. So this black woman, who's a slim, cute chocolate sister, was on set, and this white woman, she said this white woman gave her hell. Notice that? I told y'all. When these black women, when you cute and you slim and you get around these white women, these white women will sabotage your ass from day one. Glee is over now. Okay. But she's telling how it was on the set. She said that white woman tortured her on that set. You dig? Beautiful sister. These white women... They like a black woman who's hella hefty and fat, but you slim and they, cause they know the white men are going to be looking at your ass. They know you become competition for them getting a white man. The white man, I'm telling you, them white men were checking for that sister real heavy. They know they're white men. They know their white men like them chocolate ass sisters. They know them white men get sexually aroused around them chocolate ass sisters. That's what they had a problem about. They had, that's jealousy. They always do that. I've seen so many sisters, slim black women, being on set and these white women are just torturing them. You know? Just like in slavery. What's, there's a case up there in Canada. And I don't know too, too much about Because, again, I don't be watching... TV and all this shit, but there's a sister who's, um, she's a blogger named Sasha Exter, and it was some woman, a white woman who's cool with Meghan Markle, who was trying to undermine her, this black woman, and this going up there in Canada, and this, this white woman, she done lost a lot of endorsements because this black woman then came out saying that, you know, this white woman was trying to undermine her, but this is the kicker. The black woman is a bed wench. The black woman is a bed wench. I, I seen one of her kids. She had like this real light kid. So it must be a kid by a white man. So the black woman is up here trying to play both sides of the fence. Because the black woman is like, yeah, you know, she was trying to undermine me. 
you know, using her white privilege. Now, I'm not going to say she was racist, but she was definitely trying to use her white privilege. So this 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 woman, she's trying to be a bed wench, but she she knows she was undermined by the white woman, but she don't want to call it racism because she don't want to get bad get in bad with Zaddy. But let me play this clip. I want y'all to to show you how these bed wenches be trying to play both sides of the fence here. You dig this bed wench? She experienced racism from this white woman, but she didn't want to quite say racism. Look at this. Look, look, look. Jessica Mulroney show I Do Redo has now been removed from all CTV platforms and a number of brands have cut ties with her, including Hudson's Bay. It happened after Canadian lifestyle blogger and marketer Sasha Exeter accused Jessica Mulroney of using white privilege to threaten her livelihood. Listen, I'm by no means calling Jess a racist, but what I will say is this. Okay, that right there is a problem. Okay, that's bed wench talk. See, this is how bed wenches, this is a little bed wench here. This is bed wenching, on the fence bed wenching. You know you experience white supremacy racism, but now you want to try to call it something else? Because you know somebody tried to shit on you, but well, can I call it something? Because I don't want Zaddy to be mad now. I don't want my Zaddy to, to be upset. Because you, you know Zaddy is going to punish you if you call out racism now. You don't want Zaddy to punish you. We ain't playing these type of games. She is very well aware of her wealth, her perceived power, and privilege because of the color of her skin. And that, my friends, gave her the momentary confidence to come for my livelihood in writing. textbook white privilege really in my personal opinion okay well that's hold on this is one more Mulroney released a statement reading in part the event okay so this I, you know i don't know all this shit is up, but i'm just that that stood out to me this woman is out here bed wench planning and talking about well it wasn't racism well she was just kind of using her white privilege against me that's racism that is racism a person using their white privilege against you is the definition of racism, bed wench. Just say, yeah, you, you experience racism. Don't play around with it so your zaddy don't get mad. You're like, fuck these white women, but oh, I can't. But zaddy, what, what, what zaddy think? I can't make zaddy mad. All oh, them Canadian, the bed wenching up there in Canada, Lord. Nigga. It, the bed wenching up there in Canada is a whole different fucking level. Them Canadian bed wenches are the worst. Boy, y'all some of the zaddy worshiping Negroes I've ever seen in my life up in Canada. And I know y'all listening. Y'all are some of the biggest fucking bed wenches up there. Lord. Oh, Canada's bad with the bed wenching. Oh, they are horrible with that. Because, you know, you got a bunch of immigrants up there who are non-foundational black Americans. They came from, you know, Africa and the Caribbean. All the, the coon stock. All the coon stock. You dig? So the, the bedwinching up there, they, they were already broken by the time their family immigrated up there. Their family already broke them in. You dig? Yo, they like to act like ain't no racism in Canada. You know how many alt-right folks are from Canada? Yeah. Yeah, so I know her, her baby's, the son of her kid, or the, the father of her kid has got to be white because that's a very light baby and she's black as hell. Yeah. But speaking of um, foreign foreigners, I got to shout out my, my brothers out there in the UK. I got to shout out to my brothers in the UK. My brothers in the UK put in a lot of work this week. Out there in the UK, the white supremacists were threatening to come out there and do all this bullshit. The white supremacists were mad because a lot of the statues are being thrown in the, in the rivers out there. A lot of statues are being destroyed that represents white supremacy. And, okay, what is my son doing out here? Hold on. What's up? What are you doing out here? Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on one second. My son is outside. I don't know why he's outside. Hold on. Um, 
a white supremacist named Tommy Robinson out there, very well-known white supremacist. He was out here woofing, yeah, all our statues, they can't throw away, you're getting rid of our white identity. We're gonna have a march. We're gonna, we want everybody to come on out. We coming out this Saturday. They out there talking big shit. They were talking big shit last week about coming out this past Saturday. We're gonna come out there. We're coming out there. A lot of us are gonna come out. We're gonna come out. We're gonna stop all this. I said, oh Lord. I know how the brothers in the UK get down. I said, oh Lord. And the brothers from the UK was hitting me up. It's going down, Tariq. It's going to go down. Hello, brother. It's going down this weekend, Tariq. So, who was it? <laughs> brother, I said, look, I, I can't wait to see how this is going to go down. Bro, let me, I, this is, y'all, I fuck with the UK heavy. I fuck with them heavy for a reason. The UK brothers are with the shits. Because you got to catch a fair one. So when this white supremacist is talking all that big shit, I'm like, ooh, I got to see this. I, how is this going to go down? So Tommy Robinson, he's talking all this big shit. And Friday, this past Friday, Tommy, he has a, a big-ass bodyguard named Big Arch. Somehow his bodyguard, they caught his bodyguard somewhere and whooped his bodyguard's ass. <laughs> they beat the break off his body. They were practicing on Friday with his bodyguard. They beat his bodyguard's ass. So I knew Saturday was going to be a beast. And then after they whooped his bodyguard's ass, Tommy did another video kind of explaining how why he wasn't going to be there. Well, you know, you know, I, I, I look at things differently now. Then he started white explaining. Hold on, let me I'm going to play all this. This shit was hilarious. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me play on this. This is Tommy Robinson. He's a well-known white supremacist out there. Hold on. You've let them go and deface and spray paint Churchill's statue, you arseholes. How you can't expect people to, The British public won't sit by and watch that shit. So we're gonna end up with next Saturday is every lad in London, or every lad who's any sort, if you call yourself a man, will be in London. Protecting those war memorials. Now that's that's his bodyguard right there, Big Arch. That's his bodyguard, Big Arch. Now watch this. I need your help. He got beat up. Two of Jigger's fucking relatives, whatever they are. I let me for a drink. Let's just shoot me in the side of Big Star. They tow his ass up Friday. This Proper was Friday. Them on me. You've let them go and okay. deface. Okay, okay. And now, 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 after his bodyguard got touched, Tommy came out explaining. This is I'm him against the black community, because I'm totally not. And that's not because of any threats, because I give a shit, that shit. It's not because of any threats. It's because, principally, that's not who I am. Now, I hope you understand when you're watching this, and I've said I want to be in London to defend the war memorial, yeah? And I have said that in a fit of rage. And the reality being that... My presence in London now. And well, he said it because he was mad. He was in a fit of rage, but now he got he got a little act right now. I was in a fit of rage, but now I got a little act right. <laughs> After you beat my bodyguard up, I, give me a knife. I got a little act right now. <laughs> yeah, the the fit of rage. Yeah, I was in a fit of rage, but now I've I've learned my lesson. All Black Lives Matter. Many of the young black lads that are going to go, I'll go in because they think they're defending the black community from people who are coming to attack them, because that's how it's gone out. I've seen how a 20 second clip, people, and, and hope I hate the same organisations that I'm saying are using you. And as then saying football hooligans plan attacks on the black community. That's not the truth, but I realised that my presence in London would be detrimental to racial tensions. Um, the last thing I want, the last thing I want is clashes between Members who support me, and there's, there's black people coming. I've got to come against Oh, but he, he didn't he got his mind right real goddamn fast, didn't he? <laughs> Boy, he got right real fast. Hold on one second. Come here, come say hi. Come say hi real quick, baby. My wife is here. Boy, he got some act right real damn fast, didn't he? So he didn't take his ass out there. I'm gonna show some footage. Hold on. Look at Tail. What, what's up, man? This is Tail. What's up, Tail? What's up, buddy? 
What's happening with you? How come you're not in bed? Hey, where's um, where's um TJ and Siri? Bed. Talking to him. But tell you, where's TJ and Siri? Okay, you can call. <laughs> Stop being happy and shy. How come you're not in bed? Where's grandma? What are you eating, Tail? Nothing. What's in your mouth? He act like he always act like he can't talk when he gets on camera. He'll be asking a gang of questions in the house. Daddy, I want some bacon. We got any bacon? Now who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Who is that, Mateo? Daddy. Right? And who is that? Tail. Yeah. Let me go. <laughs> what, what, what's wrong? You ready to go to bed? Where, who is that? Lulu. Lulu, yes. All right, all right. Let's go in the house with mom. Here you go. What's up, Lexi? Say hi, Lexi. Yeah, my elbow, Ashley, my motherfucker. I right, say hi. What's up, Lexi? Look at Lexi with the braids. Look at the god. Give me a knife. Look up. What's up? What's going on? Say hi to everybody, Lexi. I'm hiding here. Lexi going to Vegas. Come on. Give me that thing. That's the wrong one. This is yours. Yeah, that's yours. Give my chapstick. Want to eat it? I know. Trying to eat the chapstick. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Lulu? Come here, Lulu. Lulu, don't. Put on my lips. You want to put on your lips? Yeah. Okay. Well, well use the other one, son. This is chapstick. Come here, no. Lulu. Hold on, hold on. This is. Look at Lulu, big ass. What's up? What's up, Lulu? <laughs> what's up, Lulu? Big Frenchie. <laughs> mm. All right. Like, I know. She don't wait. She wait. You, you baby? She went into that boy's bed. Oh, okay. Man. All right, y'all. I'll be in the house in a minute. Mm -hmm. All right. But, um, <laughs> Lulu got the dog smell. But anyway, so anyway, at the, so Saturday rolls around. So uh, Tommy Robinson did his white splaining why he wasn't going to show up. Because he saw they, they did a practice ass whooping on his bodyguard Friday. Well, you, you, you know, I don't hate black people. <laughs> oh, God. He, he did some back. He was backpedaling and bussy bopping. All of a sudden, black folks weren't so damn bad. Well, all black people aren't bad. Give me a knife. But family. Family, let me, hold on, let me show some of the steel shots. Let me just show y'all the steel. Uh, dude, Saturday, the white a lot of white supremacists came out. A lot of them came out. In fact, the white supremacists, they outnumbered the brothers. The white supremacists came out heavy. Outnumbered the brothers. And the thing is, The brothers put in that work on them. Them brothers in the UK beat the brakes off them damn white supremacists. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Family, let me show y'all some of the steel shots. See, what they would do, the white supremacists tried to be slick. They got, there was a section at the little location where it was a gang of the white supremacists and the police were kind of in the middle of them and they were kind of on a riser and the, you know, a lot of the brothers and the, you know, the, the anti-racism protesters were on the ground. So the white supremacists were like throwing bottles at the brothers and all that old shit. And they were like, okay, okay. And the brothers, they waited. The brothers was like, well, y'all going to have to leave. See, so y'all trying to, y'all hiding behind the police. But y'all going to have to leave sooner or later. You going to have to leave this bitch. And the cops can't escort every single one of y'all asses down the street to the train or whatever. The minute y'all disperse, it's on. Brother sat there waiting. The white supremacist, fucking nigga, fucking wanker, throwing shit at the, all right. All right, okay. Nigga, and the minute they tried to spread out, brothers start unleashing the Ogun on their ass. The brothers lit them up. Here's, I'm going to show y'all some of the still shots. Then I show y'all some video. 
But this is some of the still shots of it. They caught this one, bro. They were putting hands and feet on these damn white supremacists, guys. Another one. Well, look at the look on his face. Give me a knife! <laughs> the still shots are hilarious. Give me a knife! <laughs> oh, they, it was horrible. They were beating the brakes off these dudes. Shout out to, to my... Come on. Look, this motherfucker, he bucking his eyes. <laughs> oh, no. Lord. They were giving them that work out there, dude. They were giving them that work something serious. And <laughs> shout out to my UK players, man. Shout out to my brothers in the UK. I'm going to show some video of it. Um, hold on. Hold on. One second. Hold on. Hold on. One second. One second. Hold on. One second. Let me show, let me show some other still shots from it. Because there was something interesting. There was one part. Hold on. There was one part. Hold on. There was one part I want to show. Hold on. Y'all bear with me for a second. Because some people were had mixed feelings about this, and I understood what it was about. They were beaten. The white supremacists got beaten so bad. One brother. Oh, let me show this, this image. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This image here. This brother right here, a lot of folks like, why is he helping the white supremacists? Because this white supremacist got beat so bad. I guess the brother felt so bad because they're about to kill his ass. The brother had to carry one of the white supremacists to safety. So a lot of people were kind of feeling a certain way about it. But, you know, it, it looked like, hold on. It, 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 it looked a certain way. He had to carry him off like Whitney Houston. He had to carry his ass off like Whitney Houston in the bodyguard. <laughs> that, that image really hurt the white supremacists to see that. It really hurt to see this. That to put to, to make him look so submissive, a big ass black man carrying him off like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of an image. That's a hell of a damn image for the white supremacists to go out like that. <laughs> you got to get carried off like a bitch. But I get it. I get the brother had a little compassion because they were getting beaten so bad. He said, okay, look. Well, I got to play some of the video from some of the fights. They were literally about to kill some of these white supremacists. I'm playing the stuff that I can play because I've, I've gotten some other videos that's private where they were actually stabbing some of these motherfuckers. So I'm not going to play that. That's a little too graphic. I got some shit some folks sent me where well, these white supremacists were getting stabbed. But I'm not going to play that because I don't want to snitch on nobody. I don't want to do no foreign long distance snitching. But let's look at some of the video of some of the UK brothers putting in work. Some of my brethren... Some of the UK players doing good work for the family. Hold on. putting in work is another one. They were getting busy. Here's another one. Look at this. Hold on. Give me a noise. Oh, they were getting busy out there. Here's more. Hold on. There's a couple more. Hold on. Hold on.
Hold on, let me play some more. Hold on. Another angle. Hey! Oi! 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 Oh shit! Oh shit! Kalas! Dana in Kusu! Kalas! Dana in Kusu! Kalas! Dana in Kusu! Another, they, they need some milk. So as you see, these dudes were getting at work. They were lighting these cats up, man. The brothers out there in the UK was not playing at all. See, the thing is out there, hold on, let me fix this. Nigga. See, it ain't about you, ain't all those guns. See, ain't nobody got no guns like that. Yeah? That's the thing about the UK. Everybody ain't got guns like that, so you're going to have to catch a fair one. You got to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with niggas. <laughs> yeah? You got to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and you're going to have to catch a fade. So these brothers out there, I'm telling you, I knew these brothers was going to get busy. They, they were telling me they were going to get busy. They couldn't wait till the weekend. They hit me up, electric. I can't wait till Saturday. We're going to fuck them up. Oh, those white supremacists needed some milk with a spot of tea. It was about to go down. Shout out to the UK. That's why now you see why they don't want my ass out there. I told y'all, those UK brothers don't fuck around like that. You hear me? I told y'all how they got down out there. I told y'all how they got down. Just like when we did the, when we were going to do Hidden Colors 5. And they banned me from the UK. Remember, they were going to ban the movie from being shown. They were going to ban the movie. <clears throat> they were going to ban the movie from being shown out there. And um, the theater, or the, the venue that was going to show it, you know, they, they tried to tell people, because remember, people were coming from all over really the UK to come see the movie in Birmingham, Birmingham, England. So people, you know, they got their train tickets, um, the tickets for the venue, people planned, they got their hotel. So it was a big event. So the venue was up there like, yeah, well, there's not going to be a movie. Tariq has been banned from the country. Um, we, we, we can't share the film. They tried to play that game, and the folks, the, the black folks, was like, "Well, look, you know, I done bought my ticket, I done bought my train ticket, so you know, we, what you mean, ain't no movie? Well, we, 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 we we're not going to show it." And the people up there were like, "Well, we're going to come up there anyway. The date the movie is supposed to air, we're still coming up there, but there's no movie, but we're still coming." Yeah, we're still coming, though. We ain't got nothing else to do. But, <laughs> but he's Bond. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we, we're just going to go on up there and see what we can get into. <laughs> oh, no. So they got scared, and they were forced to show the movie anyway. They got scared. The people at the venue, they started fearing for their lives because the people were still going to come up there. They didn't like that I got banned, number one. And they were like, well, this it's going to be a live action movie. Then. We're going we're gonna to see something when we come up there. So y'all just make a choice. Of, but but wait, wait, just wait a minute. Wait a minute, you bloody wanker. It's not going to be a movie. Well... We're still coming. So you just need to make a, a decision of what type of entertainment we're going to get in. Either we're going to see a movie or we're going to see a gladiator battle. Oh, we, we, it's, we're going to get some entertainment up there one way or another. The choice is yours. But we're coming up there. 
So, you know, by the time we get there, just just let us know, or we'll let you know what the entertainment is going to be. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be a just like the Roman arena. Somebody's going to get fucked up. And that's going to be our entertainment. Somebody getting fucked up. But yeah, we're going it's going to be a movie or we're going to make a movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's going to be a battle royale. It, it's it's, it's going to be a movie or we're going to make a movie. And we plan on making a a, a kung fu film cuz we plan on kicking ass when we come up there. So they got they got scared and the promoter hit me up. He was like, "Man, the the promoters, the, the venue, they're scared. They, they call the police. It was a whole big thing. But they were forced to show the movie out of fear, nigga. The brothers in the UK made them show the fucking movie out of fear. They scared them into showing the damn movie. That's what I'm talking about. The brothers said, there is going to be something shown when we get up there. And they did not want them problems. <laughs> you dig? Say that's on period. <laughs> yeah, the, the UK brother, oh, it's gonna be some entertainment up there. The UK brother said, it's going we're gonna be entertained. The UK brother said, oh, we're gonna go up there. Y'all gonna y'all gonna get some of y'all gonna, y'all gonna, y'all gonna get some of this. It was gonna go quick. It was gonna go quick. It was gonna go quick. It's gonna be some money that's that. Don't fuck with that. Come on now. Let's go to the conflicts. Show that movie. Oh, shut the fuck up. Don't worry about that. 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 Don't Let's go. Hop yeah. on the four the four. It was one, two, three, and boom. It's gonna be a movie. my movie it was gonna be the boom 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 I got the rockers I don't know the words that he don't even know the words to the fucking song shit I'm gonna learn the words he don't know the words to it <laughs> man it was about to be the boom 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 that that nigga it was about to go down it was about to pop off, man. So, and we gotta understand this, family. See, with these white supremacists, especially over here, now remember, Trump was about to do something. Trump was going to do a rally in Tulsa for next week, which is Juneteenth. And people understood the symbolism of it, the Tulsa race riots, they're doing it on Juneteenth, so they're trying to dog whistle to the Trump um, militia groups and Trump ended up canceling that because somebody got in his ear and said hey look it's, it might just really go down because those militia groups the only thing that saves them is their proximity to the police they got connections with the police and that's the thing that saves them but if those militia groups come out there with some real bullshit if they try firing on somebody it's going to all bets are off. All the white allies that's out there, that ain't going to mean nothing. So he knew what he was doing and somebody got in his ear and said, this might, this might not go the way you want it to go. Because, yeah, everybody, all the niggas ain't out here doing the electric slide and twerking. 
And if they try, if they want to try to go that route, just all out war, then they know when it, that means our backs up against the wall. We ain't got nothing to lose, and we're gonna get busy. And some of them white allies who's out here pretending might get some of that work too. It's gonna be a bunch of Reginald Denny's. They don't want a bunch of Reginald Denny's um, um, getting turned out out there. Yeah. Because again, the white supremacists and their proximity to these militarized police, that's the only thing that saves them. That's why they don't want to get rid of them. They're not going to get rid of them. Let's be very clear. They're talking about defunding the police and all that, but they're not going to get rid of the police. The white supremacist society, they understand how pivotal the militarized race soldiers are to their wealth, privileges, and benefits and their white supremacist structure. They're completely dominant. They're, they're totally dependent on that. You understand? We got to understand that part. When we, when we understand military science, military warfare, we got to understand the issue is the militarized police race soldiers who protect white supremacy. See, that's the, that's the thing we got to focus on and find out how to bring justice to. And we got to watch certain people too. Because I saw something earlier on Twitter where Angela Davis, who used to be down with the Black Panthers, and for years I've been hearing how Angela Davis has been compromised. <clears throat> for years, people have been saying Angela Davis has been compromised. You know? Like she's on some LGBT shit. She's all kicking it with, a, I think her significant other is a white woman. And... She did some kind of broadcast, and this is something interesting she said, where she was talking about how, yeah, a lot of folks are saying she's an agent now, or well, she even been an agent, but a lot of folks suspect her of being an agent. But she said something that, whoa, whoa. She was trying to, trying to talk about how the race soldiers, these police shouldn't be punished with jail. I want y'all to listen to this. See, this is that LGBT talk right here. This is that intersectional bullshit. Listen to this. Hold on. That's why these individuals do what they do. Now, I'm not saying the individuals shouldn't be uh, rendered accountable. Certainly, they should. But I think that we can come up with better ideas than simply locking people away to render them accountable. As a matter of fact, jails and prisons... Uh, are probably a lot easier uh, to endure for a police officer who in, who's engaged in such uh, horrendous acts of violence than a process of, of beginning to understand the nature of what they've done. Uh, a process of education, a process what? of giving back to the community. Family, do y'all hear what this woman is talking about? Whoa. This woman is talking, she's talking about, well, a police officer, it might be easier. So we shouldn't use jail as punishment because jail, a, a police officer might look at jail as an easier process than educating him on what he done wrong. What are you, what are you talking about? Let me play that again so y'all don't miss that. She's like, jail might be easy on a cop, so we have to, it might be better to educate him. Hold on. That's why these individuals do what they do. Now, I'm not saying the individuals shouldn't be uh, rendered accountable. Certainly, they should. But I think that we can come up with better ideas than simply locking people away to render them accountable. As a matter of fact, jails and prisons uh, are probably a lot easier uh, to endure for a police officer who may, who's engaged in such uh, horrendous acts of violence than a process of, of beginning to understand the nature of what they've done. Uh, a process of education, a process of giving back to the community. Yeah, yeah back, what do you, <clears throat> what do you, okay. So, <clears throat> Instead of jail for these race soldiers, which is what they should do, have them go to jail, 
because that's going to stop them from killing black people. The minute you put these race soldiers in jail, I promise you they'll stop all this crazy killing. You give two race soldiers life sentences, the killings will stop overnight. If you give at least two of these race soldiers life sentences for killing black people unjustly, that shit will stop overnight. The other ones will get act right. It will stop overnight. What is she, what is she talking about? Get a process of education? That's that whole police reform. Let's take them to the African American History Museum. Let's give Angela Davis some money to teach the cops how not to be racist. That sounds like she's getting money from these police agencies to teach them how not to be racist. Sounds like she's in on the con. That sounds like she's in on it. That's what that sounds like. That sounds like she's part of some kind of program where, hey, we'll give a grant to the Angela Davis um, Police Reform Foundation because this was a Black Panther, so she's real black. That's These are her credentials. She's a Black Panther, so she's... Who, who else can tell you about blackness and understand the black experience, understanding the black experience, than Angela Davis, who was a Black Panther? She's really going to school you on what it's like to be black. And we done gave her a grant that police reform money goes to her somehow. That's what that sounds like. That's a sales pitch she's doing. That's a sales pitch. Well, we can help. Yeah, like Bobby Rush, he's a Black Panther. They were up at his office on, doing something up there in his office. Sound like he was probably in on that shit too, by the way. He's, all of these people have been compromised. All of these people have been compromised, but sounds like that was a sales pitch. Come learn how to not be racist. Don't, don't send the cops to jail because I can't make no money with that. I can't make money, but give me some of that police reform paper. Give some of those resources to my foundation and I can teach them. I have classes and I have courses where I, I, I teach them about the Black Panther movement. I teach them about civil rights. I educate them on how to give back, how to go out and play basketball with Negroes. That's a con. Yeah, she's getting that backdoor compensation, sounds like. She's getting a bag out of this, dude. She's getting a bag, and they probably pulled her to the side years ago and said, hey, look, you better get on the team. Look, you're a former Black Panther. You didn't go to jail for up, up in the 70s. They suspected that she hit a gun in her afro and gave it to, was it George Jackson? Did they suspect she gave a gun to George Jackson? I forgot all the intricate details of the case. Some of my old school players know, but up there in the, for those who don't know, in the 70s, you know, she was with the Black Panthers and George Jackson was in prison. She went to I forgot how this shit went. I, was it the gun to George Jackson or did she, did they say she gave the gun? Okay, it, it was so many cases up there. But I think they said she, she had the gun in her afro and she must have, I got it right. Okay, I, I'm getting it right. I'm getting it right. So they said that she must have had the gun in her afro and she gave the gun to George Jackson somehow. So Angela, she was on the run for a long time. They had warning posters of her and the whole shit. So when they got her, I mean, she went to court and she went to trial and she, you know, she was found not guilty, but sounds like she might've made some kind of deal then. They probably went to her and said, hey, look, you cooperate with us, we'll keep you out of jail. Because all the other Black Panthers went to jail. And I always thought, how the hell did she not go to jail and she was on the FBI's most wanted list? She bought the guns for John Jackson. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Her gun was used in a bacon robbery. Okay. All right. So they didn't cut a deal with her. They they cut. A, they must have cut a deal with her back then. Yeah, for her to not go to jail. Because remember, they were throwing all the Panthers in jail at the time. 
So yeah, like they 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 didn't cut some kind of deal with her ass. Huh? Yeah, she's controlled opposition. Yeah. Yeah, it smells like a little Takashi juice in there. Yeah. But anyway, man, let me get up out of here. Let me go in here and see what my kid's doing. I've been here an hour and a half chopping it up with the family. Oh, I've been here for two hours. Shit, I've been here for a long time chopping it up. Yeah, she fled to Russia. A lot of them were fled to, fleeing to Russia, Cuba, China, Algeria. They were, they were going to a lot of places. I know um, um, Eldridge Cleaver, I think he went to Algeria. And um, Richard Williams, he was another uh, activist, a gun advocate in the 50s and 60s. He had to go to China for a minute. So, you know, brothers was making international moves at the time. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. All right, man, it's been real. We had a great conversation on tonight's broadcast. Real good chopping it up. Yeah, time flew by, man. Damn, these two hours, damn. I've been on here for two hours. Didn't, don't even feel like that. Two ass hours, man. Man, we've been on here for a minute. A lot of y'all in here. We got what? Did we get up to 9,000 people? We, we, we were heavy in here tonight. We're like a little under 8,000 now. I think we got up to 9,000. But man, real good conversation, man. Look, I got... um. The Ogun package is coming soon. I got a cool little package that I'm going to have. Remember, this package, when it goes on sale, it's a limited package. There's only going to be 2,000 sold of this package. Okay? So, y'all keep your eyes open. Stay tuned. Also, guys, there's an app that I'm going to have released this week. Y'all stay tuned. The app is actually ready there was just a couple of typos that my app designer made. I've been getting on their asses about making these goddamn typos. So the app is actually ready now. There's just a couple of little typos that needs to be corrected. Also, because I know there's going to be a lot of people getting on the app. Yeah, I got an app, guys. That's another thing we need. I got an app for us, guys. I got an app for us to communicate and chop it up. That's coming this week. The only reason I didn't really, I would have announced it tonight, but there's typos, just a couple of words misspelled that these idiots, which I told them to fix, but I'm going to go watch the five bloods. I heard that's good, but the app is going to be announced this week. Um, I want to make sure the server issues are straight because like, we did some testing on it. It crashed a couple of times, and they said it crashed because of the server, some issues with the server. Some of my brothers out here who are tech guys, hit me up so I can ask y'all some questions uh, about the servers to, to make sure the servers are good. Um, I got some technical questions that I want to ask some third-party brothers over here um, about how to keep these servers thorough so that they won't be attacked. That's another thing, because when we release this thing, I'm... I don't want the white supremacists to try to attack servers or whatever. So I, I need some of my brothers who are thorough to really holler at me. And um, email me, guys. Email me. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch the Five Bloods tonight, by the way. But um, anyway, guys, y'all be good. Um, shout out to Charm. I see you, Charm, man. R respect. Everybody hit the cash app, KingFlex818. KingFlex818, that's the cash app. Um, we're going to start filming Buck Breaking pretty soon. I'll keep you guys posted on that. And y'all have a good night, family.